sodium channel here. And then how this facilitates the membrane potential change that is the action potential, right? So the voltage gated sodium channels are really what start or initiate the action potential. Okay, and so the first thing we want to say is that there are two, um, that, that this channel, excuse me, is a voltage sensitive channel. So this is a voltage sensitive channel. And all of that means is that it's going to do a different thing at a different voltage, okay? And so it's going to open when the membrane potential gets to negative 55, right? That's our threshold. But then it's going to close when the membrane potential gets to positive 30. So that's the maximum membrane potential value of our action potential, as we'll see in a bit. The second thing we want to say here is that uh, there are two gates associated with this channel. So there are two gates. There's the activation gate. Let's put this in a different color here. So there's the activation gate. which is voltage dependent only. And then there is the inactivation gate, which is both voltage and time dependent. Okay, and so let's draw out three states of this. Oops. Let's draw out the three states of our channel and the states of these two gates. So we know that rest, we're starting at negative 70 millivolts. And so let's consider the state of the channel there. We'll talk about depolarization. Which is negative 55. Up to positive 30. Okay. And then we'll talk about repolarization, which starts at positive 30 and goes back to negative 70. Okay, so let's kind of draw our channel here or a representation of our channel. So we've got our channel. It's got two gates on it. So the activation gate, I'll draw in red here. And during rest, the activation gate is actually closed. And then let's put the inactivation gate in. This one is actually open. Okay. So the state of our voltage gated channel at rest is that the activation gate is closed but the inactivation gate is open. And what that means is the channel is closed, but it is capable of opening if we get a threshold stimulus. Okay, really, really important. So let's put that at the bottom here. The channel is closed. But capable of opening. And that's because our activation gate is closed. Mm 
but our inactivation gate is open. Okay. And so what that means is that if we get a strong enough stimulus, we could potentially open our, activa our, our activation gate, but the way that the channel is in at rest, the inactivation gate is open, meaning that it's possible to open this channel, but only if we get a threshold stimulus. Let's look at the state of our channel during depolarization. So this is if we uh, had a few graded stimuli, let's say we summed a few small graded stimuli that are coming in on that soma, and we now reach threshold. So let's talk about what happens to our channel here. So here we have both gates open. So the activation gate becomes open at negative 55. The inactivation gate is still remaining open, right? And so now sodium can move through this channel and begin to uh, manipulate this membrane potential change. That's why we go from negative 55 to positive 30 because both gates are open and so sodium can start moving into the cell according to its ECDF and give us that rapid positive change in the membrane potential. So our activation gate is open and our inactivation gate is also open. Okay, so in state two here or the depolarizing state, this one, um, this, the, the, this state, the channel is fully open. And that's because our activation gate is open. And our inactivation gate is open. Now, there's a really important phenomenon that happens with the inactivation gate. Um, because there is a one millisecond delay, so the inactivation gate is actually under uh, a voltage and a time sensitivity. So after we get to threshold negative 55, after one millisecond, this gate is going to close, right? It's both voltage and, and time sensitive as we can see here, right? Voltage and time dependent. So as soon as we get to threshold, negative 55, we get all the way up to positive 30, where this is about the duration of that one millisecond, this channel will automatically close after one millisecond. And that is what we mean by that time dependent component of the inactivation gate. It's going to do a different thing when the, the, the voltage is changed, but also for a specific period of time, okay? So getting to that negative 55, one millisecond delay here, and then we see the closure, the closure of this inactivation gate. So let's put our one millisecond delay here, which is that timed component of this gate. Specifically, remember the activation gate has no timed uh, component. There's no time mechanism there. It's only the inactivation gate. And so let's now think about what's happening to our channel in the repolarization phase. So once again, we've got our channel here. We have the activation gate that's remaining open. But now our inactivation gate is closed. Right, remember after that one millisecond delay, this gate completely closes, okay? And so now we can say that our channel is closed. So it was closed, but capable of opening. It's fully open. And then in this state, the channel is closed, okay? It's closed and incapable, let's add that here, incapable of being opened.
Um, okay, and that's because our activation gate is open. But our inactivation gate is closed. Alrighty. And, and so we see that the channel is closed and incapable of being opened. And what that means is that even if I did get a threshold stimulus, this channel cannot be opened. Even if I did have stimuli coming into the neuron, at this time, the channel could not open even if we did have a threshold stimulus. And that is the importance of the inactivation gate is that it allows for what we call the absolute refractory period. So the absolute refractory period is a time immediately following repolarization, immediately following an action potential, where even if we tried, we could not fire another action potential until the channel gets back to this state where it is closed, but capable of being open. Okay. And so this represents our absolute refractory period. Which we will go on to speak a lot more about um, as we talk about the phases or stages of an action potential. Okay, so we've got our channel at rest. This is negative 70. And we go from, uh, and we start the process here. So our channel is closed, but it's capable of being open if we do have a threshold stimulus. Our activation gate is closed. Our inactivation gate is open. Then let's say we do get that threshold stimulus. We then have the opening of our activation gate indefinitely, right? And then the timed component. So the timed component of the inactivation gate starts when we get to negative 55, okay? So from negative 55 all the way up to positive 30, that's about that one millisecond or so, and then it's gonna close that inactivation gate, and then we can begin the repolarization phase, which is involving another channel, which is the movement of potassium, okay? And then during our repolarization phase, we go from positive 30, back down to negative 70. We'll talk about how the membrane actually slightly overshoots a little bit. So in between here, it actually gets down to about negative 85 or so, and then it kind of rebounds and goes back up to negative 70, okay? And the reason for that is because again, we're trying to approach potassium's equilibrium, which is negative 94. But then we have the reinstitution of the sodium potassium pump that is restabilizing the membrane potential, and then we get back to our negative 70 rest, right? Another important thing to say about the repolarization event is that it's responsible for the absolute refractory period. The fact that the inactivation gate is closed, and the inactivation gate is like this extra security blanket. Um, even though the channel is open, excuse me, even, even though the activation gate is open, as long as the inactivation gate is closed, then we cannot fire another action potential. We cannot open this channel until it gets back to this state. And so this is gonna be the state of the channel as we go from positive 30 all the way down to negative 85, and then eventually settle back at that negative 70, our resting membrane potential. All right, um, any questions on this before we move along? Any questions? Okay, um, so what we'll speak about now is, what we'll speak about now here is the voltage gated mechanism for potassium channels. And so potassium channels are a little bit more straightforward. They are uh, voltage and time sensitive, but there's only one gating mechanism. They don't have separate gates. It's just one opening and one closing um, that controls the movement of potassium. So it's going to open at around positive 30 millivolts. 
potassium is going to rush out of the cell. And I want you to be thinking about and connecting this to what we've been seeing so far. The reason potassium is moving out is because of its ECDF. Remember, it's got that really strong chemical driving force that overpowers its inward electrical driving force. And so its overall direction is gonna be out of the cell. So anytime we open up a, a potassium channel, it's gonna be moving in that direction out of the cell. So potassium washes, potassium washes out according to its ECDF. And then this is what restores the membrane potential. It's gonna help repolarize the membrane potential. In other words, we approach our set point or get us back to that negative 70, which is our resting state. Now, again, it's got one gate on here. So not a whole bunch of different mechanism. It's a little bit more straightforward. And this mechanism is both voltage and time sensitive. So very similar to that inactivation gate on sodium. It's going to be sensitive to the voltage, positive 30 being that value. And then it's also going to be sensitive to the amount of time that passes. Um, now it's got a negative feedback mechanism. And just again, comparing that to what we said for sodium, Sodium moves us away from set point, away from that negative 70. Potassium moves us back towards that negative 70. And so we can think about potassium's movement as a negative feedback response.